On Friday, the University of Chichester academics, students and history lovers attended a conference about the involvement of American pilots during the First World War, particularly in the skies over Chichester and the South Downs, and explored how these heroes of the skies had to come to Britain to see achievements in aviation, and talked about the origins of the two countries' special relationship. Here's my report. When we think of aeronautical combat, many people will think of the Battle of Britain and the dogfights of World War II. However, the advancements of aviation really came during the First World War, with many Americans coming to the region to join newly formed squadrons. What's really fascinating about this part of history is that it tends to be unknown. In 1917, we have American aviators uh, at, a, at a low ebb. American aviators have not been able to develop their technology, not been able to have pilots who are properly trained. With the advent of the First World War, American aviators begin to take advantage of the knowledge that's been developed in Britain, in France and in Italy. And you see several different agreements between Britain and the United States, which enables American aviators to come over to Britain to set up aerodromes and to train pilots, really giving its great impetus to American aviation during the First World War. The two most important things that emerge from this experience of the First World War, firstly, it's the development of the United States as a major military power, which takes place during the First World War. And secondly, it's the origins of that special relationship. It's Britain and the United States working together on military issues. Uh, Britain allows a foreign Foreign military power of the United States to build aerodromes on its own soil. This gives you a great example of the, the relationship which will characterize the rest of the 20th century. One of the interesting things about our campus and Tangmere a Military Aviation Museum is that we're almost sister sites. Uh, you have the RAF base there during the Second World War. But during the Second World War, when the RAF Tangma gets bombed out, uh, the university takes over as a command centre for D-Day. So there is this lovely connection in, in our histories together. But for this project, we've been working side by side to discover more about the American aviators, the individuals who served here, but also about the way in which those sites were first constructed at Ford, Rustington and at Tangmere. We see the great level of cooperation between Britain and the United States, which we've been investigating together. Despite the Wright brothers being credited with the first sustained flight, it was British engineers that really moved forward the development of these new aircraft. Where you have the, the, the origins of flight in the United States, it's within Britain and in France that you see aviation being pushed forward. And the First World War gives a, a great impetus for that technology. And it gives a chance for people to experiment with new designs, experiment with new types of training. And that's why the First World War really does usher in a new age of aviation. The sheer number of American Air Forcemen during the Second World War gave rise to the saying over sex and over here. And actually in the First World War the American visitors sought to integrate and educate with the folks around them. We call the conference over here because it gives a chance for people to reflect on, although we're very familiar with the fact that American aviators are here in the Second World War, they really come over here in the 1918. There's a, a military aspect to that, there's a technological aspect to it, there's also a social and cultural aspect to it as well, because those Americans make connections with local people across Britain. Uh, they, set up ex um, they set up baseball games as well uh, to try and uh, educate and to uh, integrate within those communities in Britain. So there's a social and cultural history which is attached to this, which is more than just the technological aspects. In Sussex, for example, you've got the American Club, which is set up in Chichester, which is there to make Americans feel at home. There's even a few stories of romances of uh, Sussex women going back with their American husbands after the First World War. So there isn't a sense of antipathy, there's a sense of uh, cooperation which is present within all those aerodromes. So the war does change people. It uh, gives you a chance to, to meet people who you'd never have thought about. It brings people together in ways uh, that you wouldn't have considered previously. It's a tremendously tragic and traumatic event, but it is also a transformative event, and that's what we're trying to explore today. This is Richard Stringer for That's TV.